In this video, we're going to talk about the pens made by Pen BBS, a company that makes very affordable, versatile, high-quality pens with a large variety of interesting filling systems that I think all artists who draw with fountain pens ought to know about. Before we begin, I want to point out, mostly for those that are new to my channel, that I'm speaking from the perspective of an artist who uses pens almost exclusively for drawing. While much of this might be of interest to other types of pen users, be forewarned. Artists use their pens differently from writers and need different things from their pens. I think most of us, when we first started developing an interest in fountain pens, have experienced sticker shock. For that reason, I try not to recommend pens over $50 to new users. However, until fairly recently, there weren't that many options in that price range, and I would usually recommend either the Twisby Eco or the Pilot Metropolitan. But now, with the deluge of pens coming from mainland China, there is a head-spinning variety of quite decent pens in the under $50 category. Chinese pens used to be derided in the fountain pen community as being cheap knockoffs of popular Western brands. The quality has improved tremendously, however, with brands such as Moonman, Wingsun, Hero, and Pen BBS not only producing quality pens, but also creating their own interesting and innovative designs. Pen BBS in particular has a great reputation with pen forums buzzing about the terrific build quality, unique filling systems, and beautiful acrylics. After reading many positive reviews, my curiosity got the better of me and I ordered a pen. When it arrived several months later, I was very pleasantly surprised and bought a few more. Here are the Pen BBS pens in my collection. This is the 456, which features a vacuum filling mechanism. Then I have two 355s, which have a really unique filling mechanism that exists, as far as I know, in only one other super high-end pen. Here's the original version, which when it first came out was almost impossible to get a hold of, and the newer improved version. I also have this neat two-sided eyedropper pen, which looks like a gimmick, but turned out to be pretty useful. Also, full disclosure, I used to have a Model 268, which at $16 was the cheapest vacuum filler on the market, but it broke on me. The design was great, like a smaller version of the 456, but it was made of cheap injection mold plastic, so I can't really recommend it. You might ask, if I only have three Pen BBS models, why am I recommending the entire brand? Well, all the pens, with the exception of the 268 and an aluminum model, are made from the same high quality turned acrylic, and though they have a variety of filling systems, they're all about the same length, girth, and weight. And most importantly, they all use the same feed and nibs, so I'm confident the performance of all the Pen BBS models will be more or less the same. So what makes Pen BBS so great? Well, they happen to check off many of the boxes of things that artists look for in a pen. The first is ink capacity. I go through a lot of ink when drawing and hate having to worry that my pen will run out. I want to be able to fill my pen once every few weeks and go on long trips without having to carry extra cartridges or bottles. Most of the Pen BBS models, other than the ones that use converters, have filling systems to provide great ink capacity, so that box is checked off. Having a clear pen or at least one with a large ink window is also pretty important to me. Again, I don't need the stress of having to regularly check ink levels before I go out sketching. Most of the pens made by Pen BBS check off that box. The ergonomics of a pen are also important, of course. A grip section that is not too thin and not too thick is good, and I find the gentle curve on these to be very, very comfortable. But as an artist, I also think the most important thing in a pen body is a consistent width from the section to the barrel, since I like to move my grip up and down the pen depending on the type of stroke or line I want to make. Again, I only have these models, but looking at the Pen BBS models online, they all seem to be fairly similar. Durability is a big factor, of course. Not that it isn't important for other pen users, but I use my pens in all kinds of rough environments from sketching outdoors to working in messy studios. I try to treat my pens well, keeping them in sleeves or cases, but it's good to know that I can just throw a pen into a bag and not worry about it. The build quality on Pen VBS seems to be very good, with the 268 being the exception, with solid feeling acrylics and lots of metal reinforcement rings, and though the company hasn't been around long enough to prove how well their pens stand up to the test of time, I think we can probably check off that box. Reliability. You want your pen to put down a line with no hard starts, skipping, leaking, exploding, and so on. This is important to all users, but artists tend to use fountain pens in the field and don't have repair tools or backup pens if something goes wrong. Pen BBS definitely checks out that box. I've never had problems with them, and they receive high marks for reliability in the fountain pen forms. Then of course there's affordability. Artists tend not to be swimming in money, and quality art supplies are already really expensive. All the pens in the Pen BBS lineup are under $50. Box checked. Okay, now that we've checked off all the boxes, let me show you my Pen BBS models in detail. Let's talk about the 456 first. Here it is in a really pretty swirling smoke acrylic. And here it is next to a Twisby 700R. 
which is also a vacuum filler for size comparison. Since the VAC700 is its closest competitor, being only $20 more, I think a comparison between the two is appropriate. The build quality of both pens is fairly comparable. The vacuum filling mechanism is equally smooth, and the ink chamber holds roughly an equal amount of ink. The 456, however, holds a number of ergonomic advantages over the VAC700. The VAC has some very sharp threading at the back of the grip section, and this really unslightly lump, which prevents me from moving my fingers easily up and down when I change the grip. The 456 also posts very securely without making the pen back heavy. Whereas the VAC700 doesn't post at all. This is a minor point, of course, but I like posting my pens when I'm drawing outside rather than having to find a safe place for the cap. All in all, the 456 is a great design with excellent ergonomics and a really sleek look to it that also happens to be pretty darn gorgeous. By the way, vacuum fillers have a distinct advantage over other filling systems in that they have fantastic ink capacity. They also have an extra feature which some people find annoying, but to my mind is actually one of the best things about it. These types of pens have two ink reservoirs, the main one right here, and then the smaller one right here. When the back knob is closed, the smaller reservoir is sealed off from the main reservoir, providing you with enough ink to draw for maybe a half an hour, maybe an hour. Once the smaller reservoir runs out of ink, you can twist open the back knob and let ink run into the smaller reservoir and then close it again. Or you can simply keep the back knob open when drawing. I know that seems fuzzy, but the advantage here is that you can seal off the main reservoir, which prevents any burping that might occur with a pen with such a large ink capacity, and also prevents the ink leaking into the pen, particularly when there's changes of pressure on airplanes. Next we have these two Model 355s. They're very similar in size and weight to the 456, though they don't post as deeply, making these pens slightly more back heavy when posted. Here's the 456 for comparison. These pens feature an ingenious solution to the biggest problem with piston fillers, that the filling mechanism takes up a big portion of the chamber, limiting the capacity, as in this Twisby Eco. At first, these pens look just like vacuum fillers, with a center rod and a plunger. However, when you twist the knob and pull it back, you'll see no plunger, but just a little threaded stopper. Where is the plunger, you ask? Well, it's hidden all the way in the back of the pen, here. You pull the rod back, and then twist counterclockwise to engage the piston. Once the piston is engaged, you push it all the way down, and then dip the pen in ink and pull it all the way up to get a complete fill. Then you twist clockwise again to disengage the piston, and then push the rod all the way back in, and twist it back into place. like so. This mechanism gives you as much ink capacity as a vacuum filler, and though it's a slightly fussier way of filling the pen, it does have one advantage, in that it allows you to get a complete fill in one go. The vacuum filler usually requires two or three tries to get completely full, and even then, sometimes doesn't fill all the way up, unless you do the trick of holding the pen upside down, pushing the plunger up, and then trying to ink again. It also features the double reservoir system, just as the vacuum fillers, so it's perfectly safe to take on flights. The improved version here solves a slightly irritating problem with the first version, in that if you tighten the knob too much when you try to engage the piston, you'll have difficulty disengaging the piston once you're done filling, forcing you to disassemble the pen. This version also holds a little bit more ink, and has a double piston which I suppose forms a tighter vacuum, preventing leaking to the upper portion of the pen up here. By the way, uh, as I mentioned, both pens are actually easily disassemblable for cleaning, requiring no special tool. And lastly, I have the Model 469, which is a two-sided eyedropper. It might look like a gimmick, but it's actually a fairly practical design. Because it's an eyedropper, it manages to have very good ink capacity on both sides, and you can place different kinds of nibs into it, say a fine on one end and a medium on the other, or what I'm doing, using it with different inks. So it has lots and lots of applications. Currently, I have it inked up with Noodler's Black on one side, and then a red ink, a diamine poppy on the other side, and I use it to do my anatomical studies like this. All PenBBS models use the same proprietary number 6 nib, 
that only comes in fine and occasionally medium. That might be a turnoff for some that like their nibs to be extra fine or broad or stubs, but the good thing is that since the nibs are number six, they can easily be swapped out for a huge number of other nibs, such as this number six nib made by Yovo. A caveat about switching nibs in the 355, however. Most standard number six nibs, such as this Yovo, if you look closely, are slightly longer than the nib made by Pen BBS. In the 355, there's very little space between the inner cap and the nib, so if you install a slightly longer nib, you're gonna crush it when you cap the pen. The solution here is to shorten the nib on the Yovo by grinding it by maybe two millimeters in the back, or what I've done here, which is to install a nib, which uh, a fude which fits perfectly well. I've also read that some people take off the finial and grind about two millimeters off the thread which adds a little bit more space. I haven't done it but apparently it works. This is only a problem in the 355 model however and all the other models have enough clearance to fit the standard size nibs, Yovo or other brands without any modification whatsoever. Another caveat is that the Pen BBS feeds have very, very delicate fins that are easily crushed when pulling the nib out. And since the nibs are pretty tightly set in the housing unit, I've already damaged a few feeds. The good thing is that a few bent fins doesn't hinder the performance of the pen, and you can easily buy replacement feeds. I should also note that the housing units are also pretty delicate, and so, several of them have cracked on me. Again, these are also easily replaced. You can get a baggie of feeds, housing units, O-rings, and converters online for about $8. But you might not want to replace the pens on a pen BBS because they're actually good quality, interesting, and fun to draw with. When you look at the nib and profile, you'll see that it's turned up slightly. This is something called a Waverly nib. It allows more of the tip to make contact with the paper, making the nib feel glassy smooth. But the real advantage to these kinds of nibs is that they're sensitive to writing angle, so that if you hold the pen vertical, it writes with a fine line, and then as you bring the nib back to 45 degrees, it'll start to put down a line closer to medium, and then even broad. In reverse writing, it remains smooth and teases out an extra, extra fine line. So in effect, this Waverly nib functions like a mini fude, giving you some line variation based on angle. Pretty neat. The feeds on Pen BBS are fairly dry, which by the way makes them unsuitable for a flex nib switch, but with this nib it allows you to put down a very delicate line that dries quickly. I think the only drawback, which takes some getting used to, is that these nibs have a sweet spot, so you have to keep the pen straight or it'll have difficulty putting down a line. This isn't the only brand that has this issue however, and once you start drawing, you'll adjust to it very quickly. So, to conclude, for those of you interested in a solid, well-designed pen for under $50, the choices have become wonderfully complicated. Pen BBS, again, offers something like 10 different models with different filling systems and a dizzying, ever-changing range of pretty acrylics. They have eyedrop fillers, cartridge converters, and even a bizarre filling system that uses a magnet in the cap to control the piston. Between the 456 and the 355, I'd probably go for the 456 for its less complicated filling system, but more importantly, the larger clearance space between the inner cap and the nib, allowing for a more easy swap. Of course, the 355 is still a fantastic, unique pen that's also worth getting. In the US, you can buy them on Etsy through the official Pen BBS store or through Easy Buy. They can also be found on eBay. Just expect to wait because it usually takes about a month or even two for the pen to arrive. I think the general rule for buying pens is the same for buying a wardrobe. It's better to buy a few expensive but well-made items that hold up after years of wear than a bunch of cheap stuff that will look worn after a few uses. But these pens made by Pen BBS have the build quality and features of pens that are far more expensive, and for the price, it's worth buying a bunch and filling your wardrobe. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have comments or questions, leave them below, and I'll be happy to reply.